Over the past few months, I've received a number of questions and participated in several discussions related to the quality of modern power tools and how to make them last longer. Now, there are several factors that contribute to the lifespan of your power tools, and we will look at several of them in this video. There are some factors that are out of our control, like the quality of the materials used in manufacturing, the accuracy of assembly and alignments, handling of shipments, exposure to moisture, and of course, we can't forget luck. These we can't control, but there are others we can control, which we'll look at in this video. Let the tool do the work, don't force it. I don't know how many times I've been on job sites where I've seen tradesmen turn on their miter saw and start cutting before the motor's ever up to full speed, and at the same time, force the saw through the workpiece, just like you see in this video. This puts a serious strain on the motor, kind of like starting your car in third gear with a manual transmission. You really don't want to do this. Listen to the motor and allow it to come up to full speed before you ever start cutting. And don't put a strain on the motor by cutting too fast. Don't be impatient. It only takes a second or two longer. This applies to miter saws, table saws, circular saws, drills, just about any power tool you might have. Let the tool do the work and don't force it. Keep your tools clean. Every time I'm done using a power tool, I dust it off with my leaf blower and then follow up as necessary with a rag and lubricant as needed. I always dust off the body, the control mechanisms, as well as blow out the motor, just like you see here. I also use my leaf blower on my table saw the same way. Let's take a look under the hood. The interior is relatively dust free and I usually blow out the motor at the same time I'm doing everything else. The control mechanisms are pretty clean and appear to have enough lubrication. Also, I try to remember to check all the wiring and electrical connections anytime I have this saw on its back. Lubricate as needed. Some time ago, I borrowed a table saw from a friend of mine to do a product review. I found the control mechanism to be very stiff so I flipped it over and immediately saw that all the gears were caked with greasy sawdust. I cleaned everything off, applied some lubricant, ran the mechanism back and forth a few times to loosen it up, and it worked smooth as silk. If one of my power tools has a control mechanism that looks like it might benefit from regular cleaning and lubrication, I try to remember to do so as often as possible. There are a number of great lubricants on the market today, these are just a few. Always refer to your manuals for the lubricant points and the best type of lubricant to use with your tool. When in doubt, read the instructions. I keep a hard copy of all my manuals in a folder in my garage workshop so that I always have them available for reference. I don't know how many times I've referred to them to answer specific questions, look up part numbers, or find specifications. You can always take your hard copies as a reference with you to the store when looking for something specific for your tool. I also download the PDF versions of all the manuals for all my power tools. This allows me to search for keywords without ever having to read through the entire document to find what I need. More power. I know I've talked about power cords in the past, but this time I want to go a little deeper into the subject. I want to drill down a little bit further. Here you see a typical white household extension cord that you might use with a lamp or a clock. This will never provide you with enough current to run most of your power tools without doing damage to them. The yellow cord is a much better, and I'm guessing this is of a much lesser gauge than needed for most power tools. I use this for the studio lighting for my videos. The orange extension cord is much heavier duty. I strongly recommend that you get a 12 gauge cord for all of your power tools. Now, why do I say this? When you first start at the motor on a power tool, it draws a larger amount of current, perhaps more than when it's up to speed. If your power cord is of a lesser gauge, this puts an unnecessary strain on the motor 
during startup because it can't provide enough current. When your power tool is up to speed and you're running it on your work pieces, here again, they need more power. Also, try to use the shortest extension cord you possibly can find for plugging in your tools. The longer the cord, the more the resistance and the less power gets to your tool. So, if your table saw is only a few feet away from the outlet, either plug it in directly or use a short 6 foot 12 gauge cord to reduce resistance. It's always better to be double safe than double sorry. Make sure you read, understand, and apply all of the operational and safety instructions for your power tools and use all of your safety equipment every single time you use them. The first time a chunk of material hits your safety glasses at high speed, you'll be glad you had them on. Inspect what you expect. Always inspect your new power tools as soon as you get them home. Look for signs of damage on the shipping box itself. A damaged shipping box is an indicator that it was mishandled during shipping, which might lead to poor alignment of certain parts and even damage to the tool itself. Look for signs of moisture or humidity getting to the tool during shipping. The drill press in this video had some rust on it in several places even though it was well packed and coated with some form of lubrication when I first opened the box. Moisture can affect control mechanisms, electrical components, as well as the motors themselves. And always check the alignments on your power tools right out of the box. Don't assume they will be set correct from the factory. If you've seen many of my power tool uh, reviews, you've seen more than one that was not quite in alignment directly from the factory. Poor alignment can cause unnecessary wear and tear that you really don't want on your power tools. While these maintenance and operational tips take a few extra minutes to complete, they can have a significant cumulative effect on the lifespan of your power tools, which makes them well worth the effort to perform. I hope these tips help you to get many more years of life out of your power tools. I've added links in the description below to more videos on how to get the most out of your table saw, your miter saw, and your drill press. They go into much more detail on how to use and maintain these tools individually. If you found this video useful, please press like and of course share with your friends. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching, and as always, good luck on your projects. Mm -hmm.